board to be serving as chairman for today's meeting until the chairman arrives to run a little bit late. At this time, I'd like to introduce the other members of the board. To my left is Reggie McKnight. To my right is Marcellus Primus, followed by Jenna Stevens and George Schaefer. I'd also like to introduce the staff to assist the board. Rachel Bailey, zoning administrator. Hope Hasty, deputy zoning administrator. And Andrea Wolf, land use board coordinator. The board is charged with hearing applications for special exceptions, variances, and administrative appeals. All testimony is recorded for the record, and anyone wishing to speak will need to be sworn in and come to the podium to speak. No testimony can be taken from the floor. When you come to the podium, state your name and please speak clearly into the microphone because the meeting is being recorded. Applicants for cases before the board are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. The time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the board or staff regarding the case. Any member of the public may address the board in intervals of three minutes or five minutes if by a spokesman for an established body or group of three or more. The applicant then has five minutes for a rebuttal. Those of you who wish to speak must be sworn. If you are here as an applicant or to speak in any case, please stand at this time and raise your right hand. Okay. Do you affirm or attest that the testimony you will give today is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Ms. Bailey. All right. So the board uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. If a member of the board or the public wants to discuss an item on the consent agenda, that item is removed and is considered on the regular agenda. The board then approves the remaining items with one motion and vote. On the consent agenda today, we have the approval of the February 12th, 2019 minutes. Item number two, case 2019-0005 for 1315, 1322, and 1324 Calhoun Street. This is a special exception to permit a shared parking arrangement. Item number three, case 2019-0009 for 2237 Marion Street. This is a variance to lot coverage for an addition to a single family residence. Item number four, 2019-0010 for 1323 Claremont Drive. This is a variance to fence height requirement. Item number five is a two part. It's 2019-0013A for 7302 Broad River Road, a special exception to permit a gasoline service station, and 2019-0013B for, again, 7302 Broad River Road, a special exception to permit a convenience store. Item number six, case 2019-0014 for 1517 Gregg Street, a variance to the parking requirement for an office slash medical office use. And item number seven, case 2019-0015 for 2222 and 2238 Sumter Street, it's a variance to the maximum sign display surface area requirement. So that is all on the consent agenda today. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone from the audience or any members of the board wish to have any items from the consent agenda removed and placed on the regular agenda? Okay, I'd like to remind everyone that we are getting ready to vote on any of the six or seven items on the consent agenda. So if you have any, 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 <coughs> let's discuss anything about it now is the time. Otherwise, we're about to take a vote and we're about to. Okay, I'd like to ask the board for a motion regarding the consent agenda and the minutes from last month. I move that we approve the consent agenda and the minutes from last month. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, All right, the first item on the regular agenda is case 2019-0006 for 2538 Two Notch Road, Unit B, a special exception to permit a liquor store. The applicant is welcome to come up. So you'll just come to the podium here. Okay, and I have the microphone here, just pass it back. Oh, no. 
liquor store, convenience store at this location. Uh, so we just want to let you know that we are just trying to do something for our community. We recently, we recently bought this uh, business and people over there in that community, they asked us to serve the money orders. And that's the reason, see, in this business, we are not doing anything for the money order, but just to give some service to the community, we have gone across, like gone forward, came forward, and started the money order in that business. That's the reason we need a liquor store um, in that uh, property so that everything will be in one store. It will be one stop where people can come, they can eat, they can drink, they have a wine, they have a beer, they can buy anything, whatever they want. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the criteria required for special exceptions that would be filled out in your application for the special exceptions? Yes. Yeah, we already did it. Yes, sir. Okay, I'd like to get you to run through those, please. Um, starting with the first one, I'll leave them out to you if you would please give us your answer. Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on vehicular traffic or vehicular and pedestrian <coughs> safety, and how adequate provisions are made in the proposed exception for parking and for loading and unloading. We get a enough for parking place also, and oh, there is no any adverse uh, More than 10. More than 10. Okay. Okay. Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on adjoining properties in terms of environmental factors such as noise, lights, glare, vibration, fumes, odors, obstruction of air, or light and litter. No. The customers they usually they come and just <coughs> buy the stuff We're and just bring it. Any Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on the aesthetic character of the area to include a review of the orientation and spacing of buildings. No, sir. We are not doing any changes outside. So nothing outside? Nothing outside will be okay. changed. Okay. Describe the ways in which the proposed special exception will not have an adverse impact on public safety or create nuisance conditions detrimental to the public interest or conditions likely to result in increased law enforcement response. No, sir. Yeah, we, have we already start selling beer over there in the convenience store. So it's so close to that building. We're opening the liquor store. Nobody okay. going to drink over there. And we already because have cameras fire. and everything where we can easily, uh, you know, monitor those people. Okay. Explain how the establishment of the proposed special exception does not create a concentration or proliferation of the same or similar type of special exception uses which concentration may be detrimental to the development or the redevelopment of the area in which the special exception use is proposed to be developed. Usually, yeah, if you'll see, we have one liquor store already, which is not even, like, not even a mile, most probably 0 0.03 miles ahead of liquor store. And that's too small. That's the reason we have opened a new one, which is, which may be a little bit more convenient for you. Or explain how the proposed special exception is consistent with the character and intent of the underlying district as indicated in the zoning district description with any applicable zoning overlay district goals and requirements. Just want to say one thing that that store, we're just trying to make it one stop where everyone can come, buy stuff, and just start moving. Just go. Okay, I think what we're looking for here is, is your answer. Um, especially regarding what the, the current zoning is, if you could just read out what you've got on this. The retail using general commercial, commercial is appropriate for the area. Okay, and it's zone C3. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, describe how the proposed special exception is appropriate for its location and compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to and in the vicinity of the property. Yes, so we have a neighborhood exactly back of the building and also in front of the building. Like we have a residential neighborhood uh, nearby to the convenience store. Okay. Okay. All right. Explain in what ways the proposed special exception will not adversely affect the public interest. No. 
like it's tanveer for the neighborhood like that's what i told like it will be like a one stop where people can come buy the stuff and they can just go and it won't affect the neighborhood it will be a plus point for the neighborhood okay all right a couple of quick questions with you get going quickly what so you're not doing anything outside of the building this is all so this the site stays the same and this yes. you're just applying for a special exception located within the existing structure correct? that's it that's it what is the what is the what is the where you are you applying for the special exception currently being used for it the was basis? before we bought the business it was used as a restaurant over there but right now what is but that? i think 2016 the restaurant they didn't open the restaurant over there so when we bought the business, we were trying to open a liquor store. Because it's vacant right now? Where you're yes, here? sir. It's vacant. Okay. Okay. And you, and, the, or, and you have a store on the adjoining property, is that correct? Yeah. It's it's a building just next to it. It's not joined together, but just a building. Separate next building. To it. A separate building next to it. Okay. But the same property. Okay. And, we, and normally we have a presentation where we can see some of these things more clearly. So I'm just trying to get a, a feel for, for what we've got. Um, it's a little more difficult without the real mm -hmm. work. Make sure everyone understands. Well, um, I think you've been through your responses and um, to our questions, so that's good. So, I'd like to ask the board for any questions for our applicant. Um, all questions, any thoughts regarding this matter? How long is the convenience store and the gas station? <coughs> so, we just took over on uh, 1st of July, that business. And when we took over, people asked about the money order to bring up over there, and we bought it after a few months. Mm -hmm. So it's like a like convenient for everyone. That's the reason now people are asking for the liquor store. We just want to bring the liquor store where everyone can get convenient for everyone, that's it. Have you heard from any of your neighbors regarding any support or opposition regarding this? Any of the residents around no, the sir. So you haven't heard anything either way? No, we posted, of course. No, okay, no comment either way. No, Okay, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak either in favor or against this matter? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, yes please. Good morning, how are you? How are you? Doing good, thank you. My name is Diane Wallace, president of Bellevue. <coughs> we already have 37 little stores in our area. <coughs> we don't need any more. I know this is a C3. But we got enough foot traffic. We got a post office over there if they need money orders. And uh, we don't need any more liquor stores in our neighborhood. We try to build up our neighborhood. The traffic is really bad over on Two Notch Road. I'm here for both of them. The traffic is really bad because the people that have to come here, they have to work during the day. And we don't we need any more. I told you all, uh, let's start this year right. You know. We're trying to build up our neighborhood. These neighborhoods, well, these uh, places will not go in Forest Acre. They will not go on Trinidad Road. They will not go into Shannon area. It's just like they want to come on Beltline and Two Notch Road all the time. And we are tired now. We are very tired. Our home owners insurance has gone up because of the foot traffic running through different neighborhoods. And I'm begging you all, please. Don't do this. We already got one, a couple of liquor, liquor stores there. And ours, 37, which we had it in the newspaper. So we don't need this in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and I need to get my address. I'm the president of, of Belvedere, 4836 Well Court. I do agree whatever ma'am told me that uh, she don't want the liquor store over there that location. But why don't we think in that way that we also had a money order in which nobody does in two notch road except we does, only because of the community. 
We are not making anything, not even a penny the money on it. The money comes and goes to the bank. It's just a service which we are providing to the community. Let that say. But in that way, we do have, there is one liquor store which is in Tunoch, which is really small, where people don't feel like going over there. Why? Because like sometimes they have some stuff or sometimes they don't have a stuff. That's the reason we want to open a, a good, decent liquor store where all the community members, all people, all like people who really need it, they can come and enjoy. Like they, they can buy it. We just want to make a, a, neat, a decent, <coughs> nice, peaceful and calm place where people can go, come and buy the stuff and can like can go home easily. And that the reason we have applying for the liquor store is only because of that we want to make that store as a one-stop store. We have we we don't we are not talking about the only liquor store. We have coffee. We have uh, we are trying to make a hot dogs for uh, most probably the next plan is making a hot dogs for the community where people can buy like a dollar a dollar twenty five cents a hot dog easily they can survive. We got chips, we got sodas, we got peanuts, we got sandwiches, we got like each and everything, you name it, we got in that store. Only except the liquor store. We got money on us. Nobody does in the whole community, nobody does. We are doing it just to survive, just to support our community. That's all. Okay. That's what to say. That's all. It's, all right. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. All right. At this time, I'd like to open it up for any board discussion. just said that same place has put a uh, uh, used tire place. Now they got the cigarette place coming up. They didn't do the tire place there. So we, we're not going to be going through all of this. And we got stores that sell hot dogs, hamburgers, and whatnot. So, you know, I mean, we got the, uh, uh, the uh, post office. You can go to the grocery store, you can go all over there. They got stores that sell it. The drug stores sell money on it. You know, you got a little store already, we don't need any more. We don't need any more. I know that neighborhood like the back of my hand. I work out there every day. I could be doing something else better to help my neighborhood besides fighting these little stores just every month. And we are tired. We are very tired. So it's plenty of stores. That's why we can't get a grocery store, because there's too many convenience stores and liquor stores in our area. So everybody eats. A hot dog, I can make you a hot dog. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak on this matter? OK, well, at this time, I would like to open up some more discussion. I agree with you. I think um, some of the points are very well taken. I, th I think what we've got here is um, did, did you got a pre-existing condition that, that maybe there are um, not, 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 not enough of the right types of businesses in this area and um, certainly understand where, where, where the um, neighborhood association is coming from, but I don't think this one particular business is the problem. I think it's a pre-existing condition and I think I agree with you when you went through the uh, criteria for the special assessment, I believe that, that they were able to meet them. Um, <coughs> any other thoughts? Okay, at this point I'd like to ask for a 
a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> next item on the regular agenda is case 2019-0007 for 1213 Height Street. It's a special exception to permit a religious information center. The applicant can come forward. Good morning. My name is William Pye, and I'm here today representing First Nazareth Baptist Church in a special application <coughs> to prevent a religious mentoring information center. This would be in line with what we're trying to do in the community. We already have a food pantry where we uh, distribute food to the needy uh, every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have a volunteer home assistance ministry where we go out and repair homes for elderly citizens. We have a, a, a dirt ministry which uh, help people in disaster and we also have a benevolent fund where we contribute to people who have difficulty paying the utility bills. And we feel that this building could serve as an information center so the community and members would know that we have certain resources, not only for them, but for the community. Also, um, with respect to youth, uh, we have a, a women mentoring center where we reach out to young ladies and also we have a, a, a men where we reach out to young men and try to steer them in the right direction. And we feel that as a church, that's incumbent upon us to try to help the community. So therefore, we have a 730 square foot house, a small building, and it's going to be man, uh, maintained on a volunteer basis where we have information there about different things. And when we have at risk youth, we, that's somewhere we can go and, and talk to them and try to steer them in the right direction. Now, the building's not complete yet, and I've noticed that there are maybe certain conditions that the staff has indicated and we do intend to conform to all relevant and applicable city regulations. Uh, we do intend to satisfy and rectify any and all code violations prior to occupancy. We, it's a special limited use, and we realize that. So we, if we discontinue or abandon this project, we understand that we have to uh, find something else to do. So, we think that there's adequate parking because the church is across the street. There's a big parking lot there. We also own the open lot at the corner of Jervay and Hike where people can park there. And we don't expect a big crowd because it's a small building number one. And we can maintain um, the value of the property. It won't be a nuisance. And we think that mentoring and information is important. People need information. And we need to make sure as a church we're trying to steer our young folks in the right direction. And we think this helps us to so assist us in that along with all the missions we have. Thank you. Uh, any questions? And you own this property currently, right? That is correct. And what is it being used for? It's an
too occupied by um, mills who work at the church. We don't have one yet, but that's that's in the plan. We have to think about it. We want to try to have a special special for the church. That would be in conjunction with the food pantry. You know, when people come to the food pantry, they would get a special. The parking requirement's very low because it's only 730 square feet. It's two spaces, so there's the driveway on that property. Yeah. It has a very minimal off-street parking requirement. Does anyone else wish to speak? Hello, my name is James Baker, and I reside at 1424 Oak Street, <coughs> and I'm a member of the uh, Waverly historic Waverly community uh, organization. We are opposed. Uh, Waverly is designated as historical residential. Their desire has nothing to do with residential. And we responded to this, our concerns in writing already. Um, the property is not a code. Uh, we have asked, you know, how does this relate to a residential de uh, designation. Um, and as it stands now, there's no handicap accessibility. And there's no parking accessibility other than on the street. Because if they come into the back there, uh, there's no right of way on the residential property there. So we're definitely opposed to what they are uh, requesting. Sorry, not to be since I really hadn't planned on speaking. My concern is what are the hours of operation? If there is a um, child care center right across the street from this site, uh, and, sorry, if the operation hours are the same as those of the child care center, then there's an issue because children, parents picking up guardians, picking up and dropping off their children, do not park in the church parking lot. They park on the height street, right there, on both sides. There's traffic, there's foot tra traffic, and there's vehicle traffic. And if the operation of hours for this center are the same, that's going to cause more traffic, of course. And there's always already a concern with people picking up. There are numerous days where I'm almost just, you just have to be careful. Between five and six, picking up uh, when I'm on my way home. Yeah. Right there on the corner, Jermaine Heights. So, right there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just at the end. How long is the on that one? Good morning. Give three hours. Uh, 
Thank you. That'll be reviewed with permitting, um, bringing the building up to code. It is a condition, if approved, that prior to occupying the building for the special exception use, there are several code violations against the property. Those would have to be remedied. And um, building code would look at any ADA compliant. That's through their code instead of the zoning code. So it would be reviewed prior to permits and it also would have to have, if anything's done to the exterior or anything that falls within the threshold of DDRC, they would still have purview no matter the use. I'd just like to comment with respect to the driveway there and the driveway there, and also the church owned 1211 and 1215, so uh, there will be parking there. Plus, the, all this space here is owned by the church, so there will be sufficient parking. The church owns everything all the way out to basically where they put this on? Basically, yes, yes, yes. And we do understand that if, if this is granted, we have to comply with the code in terms of any and all type of regulations. Do you want to address hours of operation? Pardon? Do you want to address hours of operation? The, the hours of operation would, would, would vary. Um, we see some of the measures taking place on a Saturday. Um, it's, it's not going to have operation like a daycare center. The young people that we'll be mentoring are in school. So primarily we're thinking of uh, middle days on, on weekdays and limited days of the week. And you don't want to interfere with the Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts program. You want to kind of look after that. <coughs> so there should be any conflict with respect to a, a whole lot of uh, track days. in terms of full-time people would be mostly volunteers to come to church. So you have this sort of on an appointment? Type That's correct, on appointment basis. Um, I guess I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Such a, I guess let's call it, a, with all due respect, a small operation. Could you not do, could you not uh, do this program and at your current facility and, and do this within, somewhere within the church? Well, um, we don't want to don't want to interfere with some of the operations already going on at the church. And um, in terms of the girls got to have this, they do want to have a place totally dedicated to information in terms of resources. So, um, as opposed to having uh, where the girls got on, the boys got on, uh, maybe to have a designated place for people know to go to get information. Well, uh, let me use an example in terms of the, of the uh, men's mentoring. Uh, once a year, or twice a year, they take young men out on a fishing trip. And as part of that process, we have to uh, get a consent from the parents, uh, educate the parents about what it's all about. Um, and then they have uh, twice a year uh, in terms of etiquette for young ladies in terms of uh, dressing. We'd like to have a dedicated place where the men can, the boys can go, the girls can go, and uh, and from time to time, um, the Durham Ministry is aware of 
certain uh, grants so people can apply for in terms of disaster relief and they want to designate those grants. Can we say resource over there? Do you all have a Well, we have a copy center, but um, uh, to your point, that, that's, we have a um, education tutorial ministry, that, so we can, a lot of people don't know about that because at the resource center, the ministry center, they would know that they have that available. So that's going to be there as well? Yes. Right. That, that information would be there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, so not going to be Good afternoon, board. Uh, my name is Frank Houston. I'm the president of the Historic Liberty Community. Uh, I'm also part of the ministerial staff at First Calvary Baptist Church. Um, I, there are a couple of things that I would like to point out, please. One is that um, First Nazareth is not a small church. It is a large church, a very large church. And the, the building that they are referencing uh, to use as this information center is one of three historical buildings in Historic Waverly. Those are shotgun houses. Historically, shotgun houses. One of just a few that remains around the country. And this facility to be used as what is implied as an information center, with a church of that size and nature, they have ample room within the confines that they have now to do whatever ministering they wish to do in that already uh, established church that they have now. So to say that they need this small space, which is a historical uh, structure, which is a resident, so then you're changing the concept and the historical value of that piece of property when you start using it for something else uh, which can be considered a business uh, information center that is not residential. And so it's getting out of the guidelines of being a historical shotgun house, which is residential. The application also is misleading because in there, in the application it indicates that it has a fenced parking area adjacent to the church. There is no adjacent parking lot. There is no fence to parking lot adjacent for this particular building. So that's a misconception that is listed in this particular um, application. So, you know, for several reasons that was mentioned earlier, we highly recommend that you do not allow this uh, application to move forward. The community is highly opposing to it uh, because it's not what is needed in the community and is taken away from the total concept of what historical Waverly is to represent. So I ask that the board really consider the fact that this is not a necessary piece of property that, to be, that needs to be used for this informational purpose. If I was not affiliated with a church equally as large as First Nazareth, then I would not know the capability of that church to be able to contain these informational information that he speaks of as a separate unit to the church. It is unnecessary and the parking would not allow um, that to take place during the course of the day and also the fact that um, it will create uh, havoc in the afternoon uh, when young people are being picked up from the daycare center. So uh, as President of the community, uh, we highly oppose the fact that this exception be accepted. Thank you. I'd just like to point 
this pond has not been used for residential purposes in over five years. And in fact, the church does have a parking lot across from the property of the church, and that's the only thing. Thank you. Without the surrounding historic Waverly community support uh, for something like this, I'm concerned that it is appropriate. I think there's two, two of the criteria for the special exception. I'm not sure that they can meet. Number one, uh, regarding the potential for an increase and in adverse impact on vehicular traffic, unfortunately, they don't have any parking. Very small lot, so that they can't contain the parking on site. So I don't think they meet that one. And then number seven, it's it's not compatible with the adjacent uses. Although the close um, the church is in close proximity to this particular residential structure, it is a historic neighborhood with residential uses. So my argument would be, I, I support what they're trying to do. I think I would recommend they try to do it on site because it's not compatible with the historic surrounding neighborhood and without the neighborhood support, I have a hard time agreeing with it. And I would add number five also. So um, I'd like to um, kind of counter that a little bit in that I don't believe the preservation of the historic nature of the structure it to be utilized as it would be intended. That is, um, there's plenty of historic structures now that are used for different uses than they originally were, so long as the structure is preserved in that integrity, I don't see how the use really is applicable in this case for that, for that use. And then secondly, in regard to the impact um, on the adjacent uses, um, frankly, Correct. And I'm assuming because we're not. 
there's a drive. Um, they may have to extend the drive. So, that is but possible it's to get two, spaces two parking the spaces. Two They're not going to have to put a parking lot on there. in favor and opposed the motion fails so um, we would need another motion, another motion <laughs> yes i'd like to make a motion that we deny the special exception to establish a religious information sign yes sir the motion in a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. all opposed no okay i think that's the same that it's flipped Next item on the regular agenda is item number 10. It's case 2019-0008 for 3018 Duncan Street. The applicant's welcome to come forward. It's up to you.
two of those apartments are upstairs apartments with balconies that overlook my bedroom, that, that side of my house. Um, there's the potential for 12 cars going in and out of, of that driveway to the apartment building. And that creates a lot of noise, a lot of light, lights do shine in. And, and the residents do come at all hours of, of day and night. Um, since my old, when, when, when I had my old parents, the six mailboxes were out located on the street, which was between the sidewalk and the street. And because the residents were repeatedly knocking that down, those mailboxes were moved, and now they're placed over close to the fence and close to my bedroom. So when the residents are coming in and they are getting their mail, their windows go down, the music is playing in the it's oftentimes loud, so that is disturbing. So I feel like the eight-foot fence not only will provide privacy and it will in some ways mitigate or soften the noise that I hear um, from those residents. Okay, now, buddy? Well, I want to emphasize that uh, it is a, we did everything the right way. We had the proper survey and had a reputable company, Brabham Fence, come in and replace the fence. And we didn't know at the time that we'd be here today doing this, but uh, we, we, we thought we did it the right way. And uh, I do want to emphasize one thing. The, we went out and measured the distance from the sidewalk to where the first eight foot portion of the fence is, and it's 23 feet and three inches. And from the property pin, which is about two feet in from the sidewalk, to the first eight foot section, is 21 feet, and all we want to do is maintain that. And the variance she's asking for is basically to replace the old fence as it was. As it was. And, and if you can see here, the mailbox is close to my bedroom window, and by having that foot, that fence behind those mailboxes a little higher will also help with the noise, I think. Now, is that the corrected height of the fence? Uh, it looks like it's about four feet thicker than it is. I can tell you the edge of these mailboxes right here on this side and the left side, it drops down right there to the correct height. So that's where it, where it drops down, that's now in conformance um, with the original. So the only pretty, pretty the close. Only, pretty the, close. Only, the, only, the only portion in question at this point is not in non-conformance with the higher eight foot portion. Mm -hmm. that's correct. Right. Um, I've been out there and it looks like the, a portion of it was cut down to four feet and then at that 21 foot point is where it bumps up to six it, it, and then it bumps up to eight. No. It's, when I saw it, it stepped down. It wasn't all completely cut to four. It has been cut to four. Until the 20 foot, 21 foot point and then yeah. it's eight it feet? Is. Okay. You know, the fence the, it really doesn't interfere with the ambience, and the, the ambience of the neighborhood. It's a wonderful neighborhood. It just so had it happens as an apartment house next to our house. And uh, an attempt uh, to help my sisters do some things at the house, they want to live together. This fence had to be moved anyway at, because at some point it was three feet off the line. Even though it was in bad repair, it had to be moved. And like I said, we thought we did it the correct way. We, we didn't know that we'd be here today doing that. Did get, um of the property owner of the apartment. They had the property manager actually come out and look at it once the four foot was at the, I mean the, the front had been reduced down to four feet. And she, she felt like it was okay. She said she had to go back to her owner and the owner said he was okay with it and they would offer a letter of support, which they did. And I think you all have that in, in your um, packet. Um, we have got two other neighbors Essentially, I'm just replacing my old fence, you know. But now look 
said in the title of the stock? Yes. As it opposed to being a, a projection before, correct? Say again? But now it's located within your property as opposed to projection. projection. It's on the correct line. We, we had it surveyed. Yeah, so we had not only are you replacing it, it's you making yeah, it look better. It better. We, we, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Rachel, can we take that sign down? Every, every, everybody It'll be down by tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had people stopping and looking at that sign all the time. That neighborhood <laughs> people are, yeah. <laughs> All right, the next case on the agenda is case 11, 2019 0011 for 2100 Two Notch Road, special exception to permit a liquor store. The applicant can come forward. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Gushar Singh Mani, S I N G H Mani, and we are HI Mani. Um, we are at the corner of uh, Edgewood and Two Notch. This property, we bought it in 2013, and this whole area was kind of dumped. Nobody was buying this property. I think this owner was on one of the hearings um, explaining that to the councils last time that um, he's been trying to sell that property from six years but nobody will come forward. We tried to obtain um, zoning in 13 when there, there was no construction was called because I had a in contract that if I get a liquor license, we'll probably go ahead and complete the contract. But unfortunately, at that time, there was four nay and three year, and they didn't give me no zoning at that time. So they said, wait a couple of years while you do the process and all that. So we cleaned that area for a decent property, uh, like, um, gas station, as well as laundromat, which we just completed. We nearly spent over a million dollars on that property, and we, we have eight employees um, running that show. Now, I waited five, six years and said, you know, let's, let's try one more time. We, when we built the building, we already got that 600 square feet on the front. Um, of the liquor store, but it's weakened since, since then as part of the building. Um, we have two driveways, one come from the Edgewood, which is a, almost 50 feet wide, one from the Two Notch, which is 40 feet, so there's plenty of access to go in and out. And we got about 15 parking spots, which is always good to have extra. Um, it's a C3 zoning right now, but we worked these five years very hard to keep that property clean with the Columbia police help. 
how we gone through so much, but that's what there's no incident, nothing. Everything is so clean. Now we don't have any in six year time we don't have any violations at all. Selling miners or beer or anything, no clean record. Uh, I've been in this business for 20 years, so we try to keep it um, everything legally uh, updated. So my request to you all that it's about time to move on and get a couple of more jobs paid in that area. And um, since all these city people leave, officials leave from downtown to too much, there was no decent place to stop. But if you see now that, that area, the block, I was initially the first one to come to clean that, and then everybody started following, and this, this is pretty decent now. There's a Dollar General across from me, um, um, and basically it's, it's gone. It's done well now. It looks good. USC do not have liquor stores. There could be 38, 39 liquor stores. How many are we going to get? You know, how many are we going to have? I understand he, he has six it up. That's fine. How many liquor stores are we going to have? You know, I don't understand. I don't understand. Why is this area so hot and it's supposed to be a poor neighborhood? I, I don't understand. Do y'all? understand that we live there. They don't live there. I go to the house of prayer right there and schools are there. How many liquor stores do we gonna have how are we gonna have in our neighborhood? You know, I'm looking at you you all and I don't understand. This will not happen if I have to be the only one here. I'm gonna speak up for where I have to stay at, where I have to live at all the time. We don't need too many liquor stores. We can't get a grocery store, but we get the liquor store. And just like you said, if it was a, a, a overfest of things, the man right there said, we are overfested with liquor stores and convenience stores. How many times do I have to come up here? I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to be patient, but I'm gonna make sure this will be on the news because I'm tired now. I'm really tired. You will not live around all these stores. You will not live up. They don't do anything but mess up our neighborhood. Keep the men drunk. We cook up paper. How, how many? I'm pleading with y'all. This is it. That's too old, oh, too much, no, today. That's embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Very embarrassing. And I don't mind coming up here. I'm in here by myself. But I know who's looking out for me. But the crime that's going on here, they don't say nothing about that. But you know, next time I have to bring the stacks with me. Because, you know, I'll be running from meetings to meetings. These little stores, I'm going to fight for them. I got to. You know, they elect you all to come out here and help us. But I don't see this. I don't see this at all. I see this, okay, here's a little store. Because too much in the Beltline, they thought, just put them out there. They don't live in our neighborhood. Like I said earlier, I was not rushing 
for this thing six years ago. I tried and then I just be quiet, waiting for the moment when it's the right thing to do. I, Eric or Jeans, the one took my application, I gave her about 250 signs from that neighborhood they are in favor, and I've got about 60 of them right here, whoever wants them. Um, hold on a second. So total about 300 people signed to support me simply. I've been very good with the community. I've got a good relation with those people. And they all know that we do decent of them as well. Look at this, this location, children, adults, they come and feel safe, okay? And they tell us all the time that we did a good job. So I got about 300 people signed for it. This proposal. Thank you. My name is Don Richardson. I have the privilege of working with Cary Oil Company out of Cary, North Carolina, and I have supplied Mr. Singh and his family with their fuel at their convenience stores for a little over 13, 14 years. I have known he and his family for 15 plus years. I've gotten to know them on a business level as well as a personal level. Uh, Mr. Singh has a, a very wonderful family. They work very hard doing what they do. They, have, they operate currently two convenience stores. The other one is on Bush River Road, close to I-26. It also has a liquor store in it that is attached to the existing structure. So they're trying to, to, to model both locations like, like each other. Um, they are a pillar of the community. They employ a dozen plus people. He and his wife have put two daughters through the university. One of them has gone on be put through dental school. He currently has a son at the university here. They work very hard to support their family and this is their livelihood. So if uh, you could see yourself fit, I would ask you that you approve his request. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that can speak? Okay. Um, is there that um, it appears that we just approved a special deductible which is more than the twenty nine asking it's off there two miles from the purchase property. Only two miles away. Okay. To provide basically two as far as that is concerned um, you uh, look at the two miles
similar to the last case. And, um, understand these comments. Uh, there's a lot of these types of music to do depending on the compensation in these types of areas. But, uh, the other side is we don't get many Starbucks or wines for special exception. I think we see things like that that are better uses, and I think everyone would agree that would be better for the community. But we're asked to look at the criteria for special exception and whether they meet it or not. And I, I can't find a reason to, I can't run enough of the criteria to see that they don't meet it. So, with that being said, I will make a motion that we approve the special exception to establish a book of goal and promote that process. Second. The motion and second. <laughs> Um, under other business today, we have the election of the chair and vice chair. It was last March. Yeah, we do it once a year. I don't think so. That, that was when Calhoun and Meekin retired. That was to elect the new vice chair. Okay. Yeah, because Calhoun McMeekin was the vice chair and one of you all took his spot, so it was just to replace the vice chair. So okay. this would to be. Really not to interrupt you at all, but I would, I would like to nominate Chuck okay, to yeah. the chair. Yeah, I need to. Because I second that. And vice chair. Is there a Second to that nomination. Okay. All right, we're good for a year. <laughs> so there's no other business. We can vote. Sorry. <laughs> 